Hey everyone, I'm Army Gaming. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to Monster Analysis. Up for analysis today is a metal legendary monster known as Hercule. Ladies and gentlemen, come and see this one man show. The incredible Hercule has the strength of a thousand monsters, the class of a sir, and the voice of an opera tenor. Here we have the different forms of Hercule, from the time he was a little lad, to his teenage years, to whoa, what the heck happened there, to his adult form. Anyways, let's get into his stats. Hercule boasts an impressive power of 3542. In terms of metal legendary monsters, this is actually the second highest stat. Annihilator, R2, and Octex currently have the highest power for metal monsters at 3,575, but again this is the second highest power stat, making Hercule tied for third place, and he's actually tied for third place with a load of monsters like Draza, Metalhead, Superdan, General Holter, so there's a chunk full of metal monsters that have this power, nonetheless Hercule is a part of that group, therefore he's tied for third place when talking about metal legendary monsters. As for life, Hercule has a life of 36,191, and this is actually the highest life for metal legendary monsters, and in fact, when talking about all legendary monsters, there's currently over 170 legendary monsters, this is the second highest life stat. Currently, Oro still dominates with a life of 40,112, and the next one to Hercule is Hermine the Tenacious, the VIP Earth monster with a life of 34,683. So you can pretty much imagine that it's going to be a while before Hercule gets kicked out of second place. As for his speed, he has a speed of 3047, and this typically happens with tanks. When tanks have a really high life, they tend to be really slow. It's the same thing with Oros, it's the same thing with Hercule. Now in terms of metal legendary monsters, Hercule is definitely the slowest. When talking about all over 170 legendary monsters, Hercule is in the bottom 15. Interestingly enough though, Hercule has a trait, Immune to Freeze, and he's actually the first metal monster to be immune to freeze, and he's actually the second monster to not be a water monster that's immune to freeze. Currently, the only other monster that isn't water and is immune to freeze is in the magic category and that's a reptile. So now we have Hercule, who's metal and immune to freeze. Very interesting, and even though Hercule's pretty slow, you can pretty much imagine that he's gonna work well in team wars involving water and metal. Because then the enemy's immobilizer most likely won't be able to immobilize two of your monsters, that is unless they have Cavernfish, which has AoE stun, or if it's General Thieves, which can just drain your stamina. Anyways, we move on to skills. Media Circus and No Fair. Nothing too interesting with the default skills, let's move on to Special, the greatest show on earth. Deals insane special damage to all enemies. This is a special based AoE that deals 80 damage to all of the enemy monsters. That is literally insane. 80 damage, given this monster's power, given even like 2 strength runes, that's enough to wipe out all of the enemy teams. Even though a lot of people would categorize Hercule as a tank, I really do think the description is a lot more fitting and this monster is a really powerful attacker. I honestly have no gripes with his ultimate attack. Special based, 80 damage, AoE, that is absolutely perfect. As for his skills group 1, there's nothing too interesting there. Peak performance, brave as a lion, balancing act, let's just go ahead and skip to skills group 2. And like I pretty much say with every single metal monster that's ever been released, you can honestly pick any combination of the following 6 skills and you'll have yourself a pretty good monster. Like most metal monsters, this one has an AoE magnetizing followed by a 45 damage metal based AoE, so you can totally do that if you want, or if you're getting tired of that, you can utilize some of his other skills and he still packs quite a punch. And you can see that with his first skill from skills group 2, World's Fair. Deals very heavy special damage, gains a 30% shield, requires cooldown. So this deals special damage to a single enemy, dealing 60 damage, it costs 30 stamina, and it has a 2 turn cooldown, and you get a small shield which is equivalent to a 30% shield. Now I'm usually not a fan of 30% shields because I consider them to be way too small, but when you consider this monster's life, a 30% shield is equivalent to 10,857. That is a lot of hit points you can take with a small 30% shield, and for that reason World's Fair is the skill you might want to consider running. And to top things off, 60 damage given strength runes given this monster's power, that has the potential to one hit a lot of enemies depending what level your strength runes are. If they're a high enough level, you could potentially one hit most enemies, which is pretty nice because you can wipe out one enemy and and at the same time, give yourself this small shield, you can take almost 11,000 hit points, so that's pretty good in my opinion. The following skill is called Just What I Needed. Heals by 10%, gains 20% stamina, loses all negative status effects from itself, gains 1 extra turn, requires cooldown. Wow, that's all I have to say about this skill. It's a self skill, 33 stamina points, and it only has a 1 turn cooldown, which makes it even more amazing. You would think with all of the effects this skill does, it would have a higher cooldown.
cooldown. It only has a one turn cooldown. You heal by 10%. And if you're thinking 10% is not a lot, actually, because of this monster's life, 10% is equivalent to 3,619. And yeah, that doesn't sound like a lot, but there's actually monsters that give themselves a 30% shield, and their shield can actually take less hit points than when this monster recovers with just a 10% heal. So that puts it into perspective how even though it's a 10%, that's more than other monsters 30%. So that's good there. Gains 20% stamina. That's crazy because this skill costs 33 stamina points. And when a monster recovers 20% stamina, they recover 27 stamina points, which means every time you use, just what I needed, you're only at a net loss of 6 stamina points. So you can kind of argue that essentially this skill only costs 6 stamina points. So if it costs 6 stamina points, and you recover 10% of your life, you give yourself an extra turn, and most importantly, you remove your own debuffs, that is incredible. Now of course you need the initial 33 stamina points to actually be able to use this skill. But going back to what else it does, removes all negative status effects. This is what makes this skill amazing. Because this monster is a tank, the biggest trouble tanks can run into is if the enemy places some sort of damage over time effect on them. Something like burning a especially which removes 15% of their life, something like poison, something like bleeding. There's all these different DLT effects in the game, so having just what I needed is amazing. Now because we're talking about specifically metal monsters, there's monsters like Mecha Monster and Metalhead that have possession skills. If the enemy has one of those monsters and you have Hercule and they possess your Hercule, all you have to do is use just what I needed, you rid yourself of possession, you get an extra turn, so then you can follow it up with World's Fair and attack that enemy's Mecha Monster or attack that enemy Metalhead and they're as good as gone. At the same time you recover 10% of your health and at the same time you would giving yourself a 30% shield. That's pretty darn amazing. Of all the skills Hercule has, this is probably the most important and this is by far a must have skill. And then we have tonight's top 10. Deals low special damage to all enemies, may magnetize all targets, requires cooldown. This is a special based AoE which is nice, it deals 30 damage, costs 35 stamina points, has a 3 turn cooldown, and it's your typical AoE magnetizing skill that a lot of metal attackers have. You're definitely free to use this skill if you want to, it's nice that it's special based and not metal based, so it's really up to you whether or not you want to use this skill. And thus we move on to skills group 3 and we start things off with Fair Dinkum. Deals massive special damage, gains a 20% shield, requires cooldown. So this is a special based skill that targets a single enemy, deals 75 damage, costs 30 stamina with a 3 turn cooldown. So compared with World's Fair, you're sacrificing tankiness, your shield instead of being 30%, it's a mini shield, 20%, but you gain an advantage in damage. Instead of being 60 damage, it's gonna be 75 damage. So if World's Fair is not enough to one hit the enemy monster, then for sure Fair Dinkum is gonna be. This monster's power, given two high level strength runes, given Fair Dinkum 75 damage, that is definitely gonna one hit the enemy monster. Going back to Hercule being possessed by an enemy Mecha Mancer or a Metalhead, if you get possessed and you do just what I needed, rid yourself of possession, then use Fair Dinkum on that enemy Metalhead or Mecha Mancer, they're as good as gone, for sure. 75 damage, there's no way they're not gonna be defeated. Also, just to really show how powerful just what I needed is, let's see to Team Wars involving dark and metal and the enemy has a mecha monster and some dark monster they can possess because even if they were to run krampus krampus can only freeze you and hercule is immune to freeze so let's just say for my example they choose two monsters that have possession skills if one of the enemy deny monster whichever one is faster whether it's their metal mecha monster or whatever dark monster with possession skills they use if they possess hercule Hercule can just use just what I needed, followed up with Fair Dinkum, wipe out one of them. On the following turn, if they possess him again, because just what I needed has a one turn cooldown, he can use that again and then use World's Fair and probably wipe that monster out. Hercule has a lot of potential, but anyways, Fair Dinkum, this is a skill I would use in my build just because I'm tired of the whole 45 damage AoE, which is what over the top is. Deals moderate metal damage to all enemies, requires cooldown, it's a metal based AoE that deals 45 damage to all of the enemy monsters. Nonetheless, if you want to use tonight's top 10, and over the top, if you want to do that combo, you're totally free to do so. As for his last skill in skills group 3, we have Field Day. Deals very heavy special damage, returns 25% of the incoming damage, requires cooldown. So this is a special base skill that deals 60 damage to a single enemy monster, costs 31 stamina, and it has the 2 turn cooldown. And this gives your Hercule damage return. Now if you're familiar with the Rood, the Rood has a skill that gives his whole team damage return. So damage return basically when the enemy monster attacks you, you return 25% of the damage. To put it in a very clear example, if the enemy monster attacks your monster and deals 10k damage, you return 2500 damage to that enemy monster that attacked you. And it's honestly not too much, I guess it could be significant, 
However, and you guys can correct me in the comments below if I'm wrong, if you use a skill like Fair Dinkum, which gives you a shield, and you have damage return, you're not going to be returning any damage, because the shield is actually going to protect you. So if you have that 20% shield, and you have damage return at the same time, whatever damage the enemy hits you with, that's absorbed by the shield. So you're not going to return anything. The only way for you to return something is if your monster actually loses life. So you can argue whether or not Field Day is worth using. Anyways, as for what skill set I recommend, I recommend using just what I needed, World's Fair, Fair Dinkum, and then the fourth and final skill, it can honestly be what you want. I think I'm gonna use over the top just to have that strong 45 damage AoE. I might use Field Day just to have another single enemy hit, because let's be honest, after I use Fair Dinkum on an enemy monster, there's only gonna be two monsters alive. I really don't want a 45 damage AoE. At that point, I'll probably be taking them one by one. So I'm leaning towards over the top. I might choose Field Day. I'm not completely decided yet. I mean, heck, to be honest, you probably only need World's Fair, Fair Dinkum, and just what I needed. And then, of course, if you want to, you can also do just what I needed, Tonight's top 10, over the top, and then one of these skills, World's Fair or Fair Dinkum. Fair Dinkum will give you more damage, but you'll get a smaller shield. World's Fair will give you less damage, but you'll get a 10% higher shield. So it's up for you to decide. And now the question is, what runes should you use on this monster? And normally for me, when a monster has a really high stat in one category, I like to capitalize on that. So normally I would recommend for people to use at least one life rune. That way he becomes even more tanky, even more harder to defeat. And maybe that would work in a defensive build. But as far as offense, I think you should on two strength runes and one speed rune. I think his life is plenty high enough and I think the fact that he gives himself shield and can recover even 10% and then give himself another shield, I think he's pretty tanky enough even with no life rune. The reason I think it's absolutely mandatory to use one speed rune is just because of the speed being too low. 3047 may not seem that low but when you factor in runes it actually really is. So when you consider the fact that a lot of deny monsters have a base speed of 3465 and if you were to get that deny monster 3 level 6 speed runes which is certainly possible for a lot of free to play players to get that raises that individual monster speed to 5960. As you can see that's almost double Hercule speed. Now when a monster has double the speed of another monster that monster with double the speed will get 2 turns in before the other monster will get 1 turn in. So this can be quite disastrously which means if the enemy monster was to have 2 level 6 and 1 level 7 they definitely get 2 turns in before Hercule gets one turn in. Or heck, if that enemy monster was to have better team speed runes than you had on your monster, on your third monster, then that monster with those speed runes would also get two turns in before Hercule gets one in. So you gotta be extremely careful with that, and I think it's because of that that this monster absolutely needs at least one speed rune. If you do want to capitalize on his tankiness, you could also do one life, one strength, and one speed rune. However, if you do that, you're sacrificing power and this monster probably won't be able to take out most monsters in one hit. Even if you use Fair Dinkum, which is 75 damage, even if you do his other skill that is 60 damage, you probably won't be taking them out. However, you will be making them extremely tanky and a lot harder to kill. So that's also a viable option. Anyways, as far as how good this monster is, I think in Team Wars, there's definitely a lot of places where he can certainly fit. He's obviously a good monster to use in Team Wars involving water monsters. Because he has a one turn cooldown skill that gives him an extra turn and removes all debuffs from him, you can pretty much argue that he's good against any war involving monsters that possess, which includes dark monsters and which includes magic monsters. Now of course his weakness is magics, so you can argue whether he's good to use in a magic war or not. However, even if you do use him in a magic war, most likely the enemy magic monster will be running off speed, so they're not going to be dealing too much damage even though Hercule is weak to magic attacks. So once Hercule gets possessed, get rid of your possession, fair dinkum on the enemy magic monster, and they're as good as gone. Overall, I have to say I really do like Hercule, and I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it really looks like Soldier Point is giving us a lot of niche oriented monsters. And so this is where you guys chime in. That concludes my analysis on Hercule. Let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments below. But more importantly, give me your thoughts on Hercule. Do you like him? Do you dislike him? How do you think he compares to the other legendary metal monsters? Whatever's going on through your head, let me know in the comments below. Like always, also be sure to let me know what monster you want to see analyzed next. And with that being said, I hope everyone has a great amazing day or a great amazing night. Remember to dream big and pursue your passions. Why is he only wearing underwear?